Internet The global system of interconnected network is arguably one of the greatest invention of mankind. From streaming Netflix, ordering stuff online, to watching this very video, it has got numerous application. But what makes this internet a safe and secure place for browsing are encryption algorithms. And the responsibilities for these encryptions to be uncrackable lies in the hand of the biggest mysteries in the field of mathematics, the prime numbers. We thought about prime numbers in our school, a number that is divisible by one and itself. But what we are not taught is that how important these numbers are to the modern world. They are the building blocks of all the other numbers. As every number is either a prime or can be built by multiplying primes together. And so, they are often regarded as the atoms of mathematics or at least of numbers. Now coming back to the security of internet. Have you wondered? What keeps your banking details, be it on Amazon, Flipkart, PhonePay, or any other online payment platform, private and secure from hackers? Well, it's done by various encryption algorithms. You can think of it as a process of taking a message and scrambling its content so that only certain people can look at your message. And the working of almost every single one of these algorithms depends on prime numbers. One such widely used encryption method is the public key cryptography. So it works like this. We start with two class prime numbers P and Q and we multiply them together to get a composite number R. Now the thing about computer is that it is very good at multiplying numbers together but if you start with R and try to reverse the process to find the prime factors P and Q, it turns out to be very difficult. Now this number R is used to generate what's known as the public key and this public key is used to encrypt your debit card, credit card details and whatnot. And then the bank or any other receiver decrypts details by using the primes P and Q, which are kept secretly. Hence, known as the private key. Only the receiver knows what P and Q are, so they are the only ones who can access your credit or debit card information. Just to give you guys a quick example, we can try and encrypt a message manually. Now let's say you want to send a secret message to the bank or to any other receiver for that matter. But let the receiver be the bank for this example. The bank will have two numbers, we can name them N and E, and let's take them to be 33 and 7. These numbers are going to be public, meaning anyone can look it up and they are not really secret. The bank will have another set of number, that is D, which is going to be a secret, and no one knows what it is. Only the bank knows what this number is. We can send any message to the bank. For this example, let's send the message hi. Now the first thing what we do is convert this message into a number. Well that is simple as A is 1, B is 2, C is 3 and so on. So H becomes 8 and I becomes 9. Now we turn these numbers into code by using the public number E which is 7. We do this by raising the power of this number to 7. So we calculate 8 and 9 raised to 7 and get this huge number. Now for the final step we use the second public number N that is 33 and divide the number by 33 and note down the remainder and bingo this is the encrypted version of a message hi and please note you have taken the remainder not the quotient now for decrypting this message we start by using the secret number d in this case it is 3 now there's a formula to find out the secret number but we'll get to it later on now for the first step of decryption we raise our code to the number d that is 3 and we get the following numbers further again we divide by number n which is 33 and again find the remainder so we get 8 and 9 and further the decoder will turn this code into letters which is high one of the crucial number in this process was the number 33 it was made by multiplying two prime numbers 3 and 11 these prime numbers are important for calculating the secret number D. Without these primes, we wouldn't have been able to decrypt this message. For the mathematically keen viewers, the rules for finding your E and D are as follows. You can just pause the video and go through this. That was just a simplified example just to give you guys a general idea on how encryption works. There are a lot more steps involved when the real thing happens on your PC or cell phones. Like there's something known as hash function which completely alters the message 
providing an additional layer of security. And also, the prime numbers that are actually used for encryption are massive. And the massive, I mean they are around few hundreds or thousands of digits now. So for a hacker using a state-of-the-art computer system, it would take decades for him to compute the original primes and cracking the code. Because of prime numbers primordial role in internet security, there are some of prime numbers that are illegal. You see, this thumb on the screen is actually illegal to possess and to distribute. So to avoid prison, I have changed some of the digits here and there. This number in particular was used to encrypt movies on Blu-ray DVDs. And if you have this number, it allows you to crack the encryption and make copies from movies on your computer. In recent years, there are a lot of cases of distributing of illegal numbers throughout the internet. Which is a serious problem. Companies like Sony has even sued people for distributing their encryption key of their registration. The whole idea of some numbers being illegal is crazy. Especially when it has something to do with computers, where everything runs on zeros and ones. You see, everything that is digital, that is movies, songs, files, documents, even this very video, can be converted into binary numbers. Take this image for example. This picture is banned in China due to some political reason, but one can easily convert it into binary number and share it across the country, making the binary number illegal. Similar things started happening with other illegal numbers as well. They were converted into hexadecimal numbers and hexadecimal can define colors as well. So for example, if the number 3120 is illegal, we can convert it into hexadecimal and represent this number as color, making this color illegal. So the colors representing the illegal numbers were circulated throughout the internet just to annoy the big companies like Sony and the others. But there's a lot of legal jargon involved in this case, whether the color or the number itself is illegal or the information it possesses. And since I'm not a lawyer, it's better if we don't get into that. As technology is evolving and computers are getting faster day by day, there are newer encryption techniques invented for better performance, like the elliptical curve algorithm, which does not use prime factorization. But still, as is rudimentary form, this algorithm uses prime numbers for its processing. And the prime curve has excellent cryptography properties. It's a huge subject, so we'll not talk about elliptical curves in this video. The mathematics involved in the security of the internet was actually worked out in the 17th century by the mathematician named Pierre de Fermat. It is known as Fermat's legal theorem in which he stated that if we take any number, let's call it A, and raise it to any prime number P and subtract A from it, it will give you a number which is going to be a multiple of P. For example, we take number 8 and raise to 3 which is a prime number and subtract 8. We get 512 minus 8 equal to 504 which is a multiple of 3. And further, by dividing 3 by 504, we get other multiple of 504, that is 168, which is not a prime number, and hence 504 cannot be used as a public key. So by doing this, we get one prime factor of the number for sure. And further, if the second one is also prime, we can use this number as a public key. So it verifies whether the number can be used as public key or not. You can imagine that back in the 17th century, when Format came up with this, people were not impressed and they probably thought this theorem to be useless. But 300 years later came internet and this theorem becomes very important. In fact, a whole modern or internet depends on this very theorem. Hope you liked watching this video. If you did, well then like the video, share it and follow Flying Carpet for more.